Hi, girls. Hi. Okay, so I'm sending the link to another group. Uh, please uh, let the other girls another link. There was a problem earlier. So sorry, we're late by about five minutes, I think. Okay, no, seven minutes. Okay, uh, I'm so sorry. So let's um, let me just send off this Telegram message. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right. I hope you have done your homework. Okay, I hope you have done your homework. Um, I've given you some work that was the quizzes. And also, uh, I've also given you the notes right, for the earlier first slot of the session of the class. Okay, can I just have a comment? Uh, can you please write in the comment box whether you can hear me? Okay. Can I have feedback? Whether you're able to hear me? Okay, I would like to share screen in a while. Oh, okay, good, Sinhui. Okay, hi. So sorry about the problem just now. Okay, um, it, the broadcast ended ended uh, by, by itself. Okay, actually actually ended earlier. <laughs> there was a mistake. Okay, so I'm hearing, yeah, okay, right, good. All right, girls. Okay, thank you very much for staying with me. <laughs> so sorry. Okay, now let, let's start the lesson. Huh? Okay, good. All right, good. Thumbs up. Huh? Okay, now I'm sharing this screen. I hope you can uh, see it. All right, give me a few, um, few, uh, few seconds. Okay, I'm going to share the notes that I was going to give you. I, I was okay. I want you to um look at it first. Like again, I do not want you to. I'm not going to give you the notes because I know that you will not read them. But if you listen to the explanation, okay, and I, I and then you make your own notes from here, it will be have a, you will have a better. That will be a better effect. Okay. So now, are you able to see the screen? Can I have your feedback? Can you see the screen? Okay. Okay. Yes, I think yeah. All right. So now let's look at today's lesson is on secondary growth. So actually, I've started secondary growth in my previous lesson. Okay, that was last week. Okay. So actually, let's go through a little bit before I continue with secondary growth. Okay. Now, uh, there are two types of growth: primary growth. So as you know earlier. Primary growth is the growth which is primarily concerned with uh, getting the plant to grow taller and also the roots to get uh, longer so that it can actually move into the soil to obtain uh, water and nutrients. Plus, the roots going, uh, the, the shoots going taller is to obtain sunlight for photosynthesis. Okay. Uh, are there any comments? Please just feel free to type. Okay. So I'm using one screen. So it's a little bit difficult. I have to change. I have to actually move the screen a little bit to be able to see your comment. Okay. So far, nothing there, right? Nothing, uh, no, no questions yet. Okay. We ask for secondary growth. This is the growth where uh, we actually, um, the plant actually gains diameter. Okay. The stem especially so that it gains support. Okay. For additional, because when the plant goes taller, it will additional additional weight. So additional weight will make the plant very heavy. So the plant will be able to snap, okay, if it's not strong enough. So secondary growth is to uh, to uh, increase the diameter and also the girth. Okay, you see this word girth, huh? G I R T H. Get okay, this word here. Girth means the diameter actually. Okay. Read one to use. Okay, the diameter means the girth. Girth is actually the width. In other words, it's the width. All right. Okay, so. I will not go into detail. Uh, this is already gone through earlier. Now I want you to look at this word dicot. Okay, last time you have learned in uh, lower in lower secondary that is in form two. When you learn what dicot, uh, monocot and dicot. Again, I also ex explain the difference between monocot and dicot. You look at the leaves and also look at the seeds. Now for here, actually, when you have this uh, new KSSM syllabus, we are going to use this term U dicot. Okay, so U dicot. We call it U dicot. So because The, the the same. Uh, dicot is actually uh sorry u u dicot or u dicot is actually a subgroup of the dicot. So the textbook use the word u dicot. So please uh continue using or con or just follow the textbook this KBSM uh, KSSM syllabus. Just u has dicot. Actually, there's slight differences, but you don't need to know that. Okay, so we don't need to um, be uh, be too concerned with all the little little details. 
for here is for top, okay, the new syllabus. So that's the KSSM syllabus. Okay, now let's look at the growth. Let's con uh, let's uh, revise the growth, the secondary growth again. Now, how do you have the secondary growth? Secondary growth primarily will produce the secondary xylem and secondary phloem. Okay, so here the stem cross section of the stem, and you will see here that the pith. This is called the pith. Pith is what we call the summa, the middle part of the stem is called the pith. And you have all these vascular bundles. So this whole thing is a vascular bundle. And in the vascular bundle, you will have three types of tissues. So the one that's nearer the epidermis or the bark or the outer side, this is called the phloem, right? You have to remember this by now. You have to memorize already. And the one that is nearer to the pith is called the xylem, okay? Xylem. And this tissue in between here is called uh, cambium okay and so these are the three tissues which makes up your uh, this is called the vascular bundle the whole structure there is called vascular bundle and what you're looking at this is dicot okay you are uh, okay right? because uh you see the pattern the arrangement of the vascular bundle they are all arranged in a very nice circular manner circular arrangement so this is one of the characteristics uh, if you want to cut across the stem, you can see after cutting across the stem, if the uh, vascular bundles are arranged like this, then you will know that it's actually a eudicot. Okay. Now, this is the cross-section before the plant has undergone uh, secondary growth. So now, let's see how secondary growth takes place. Okay, I want to revise a little bit. The previous uh, lesson, I showed this part. Okay, here. Okay, sorry. Ah, okay, now. So this is what happens when your di your cambium uh, divides. Okay, you'll find your cambium is in between the cambium are the red one, uh, sorry, the yellow, the yellow cell here. And on the inner side is xylem, on the outer side is phloem. I'm just recapping a bit because it's been a week already, yeah. So you may forgot forget some of the important um uh, stuff about the secondary growth. Okay, are there any questions so far? All right, nothing so far. Okay, now so as you see, it, when the cambium divides, it's going to produce new cells. So on the inner side, which is nearer the pith here, it's going to multi. Uh, it's going to have uh, undergo cell division called mitosis. It's going to make another cell. So it's going to make two cambiums. So the one that is facing the nearer the pith will actually later on will become the xylem. So this cambium becomes xylem. It differentiates into xylem, while the other one remains as a cambium. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, you need to have another, you need to retain it as a cambium because the cambium will further divide. So if the two of them uh, specializes to become xylem, that means you, if these two cells become xylem, that means there's no more cambium. When there's no more cambium, the cell division will stop. Okay, it's not going to produce any, any more xylem or any more phloem. So you need to have one cell which remains uh, as cambium. And after that, this cambium will undergo mitosis. And then it, this you get another cell and this cell becomes a phloem. So this cycle continues, continues and repeats until you see that the cell facing the pith will get more and more xylem. Right, this is the new xylem. And the one, the cells which are towards the uh, epidermis, you will get more and more the phloem. So these are what we call the new xylem and new phone cells. And we call them actually another name, right? The new xylem will be called secondary xylem. And the other one, the new phone will be called the primary, uh, sorry, the secondary phloem. So here in, uh, in uh, summary, so this is the xylem facing the pith. This is the phloem facing the epidermis. So this is epidermis of the stem. All right, okay. So now when this meristem divides, it is going to produce a layer of new cells here, okay? So this one becomes your new xylem. The one nearer to the meristem is always the new xylem. So here I'm gonna change the color. Maybe I'll make it to dark blue, okay, dark blue, to show that these are the newer cells, the newer, uh, newer what you call the xylem. And the one on the outer side, I'll make it dark blue, uh, sorry, dark uh, green. All right, this is your new floor. So here we give the special name. This is a secondary floor. All right, and this is a secondary xylem. The one that is pushed 
toward the outer to the epidermis is called the primary phloem. And this one is the primary uh, xylem. Okay. So this is how it works. Huh? All right. Now this is what you have your secondary growth. So you have a lot of pictures, right, to show how secondary. You see that the vascular bundle is more like becomes longer and longer with the old cells flowing pushing towards the, the epidermis and the older xylem pushing towards the uh, pith, okay, or the middle part of the, of the of the stem. So this is what it works, it looks like. Okay. All right, you have this picture. I think more or less you have it in the textbook as well. Huh? I think it's something like this. Okay, just that mine is in a soft copy. All right, so you have the primary phloem. You need to identify this. So I'll give you a question. But you try to work out which part is which one. Okay, you need to identify and you need to label. So the more important thing is you need to know how to uh, identify which part is which part. Okay, that's why it's very important for you to understand the structure. Okay, then... So where is the primary phloem, where is the secondary phloem, right? This is secondary growth for the first year, okay? So the, this is plant that actually uh, grows more, more than one year. So this is, uh, this is later on, you see the two types of uh, tree plants. Uh, some of them will live for a very long time, just like your mango tree and your durian tree, they live for many, many years, even 20, 30 over years. And some trees or some plants actually live for only a few months and then they die off. And some will live for about a couple of years. Okay, so you have three types of uh, plants which have different, what you call the life cycle. Okay. Then after that, as it grows older, this one has been there for two years, it's a second year of growth. Sticker. You see that your sticker, you will have the secondary. Uh, this one forms the bark. Okay, I mentioned earlier, bark consists of three parts, which is the cord. Cock cambium and secondary phloem. So this is the cock cambium. Cock cambium is another uh, cambium cell here or tissue here, which actually also undergoes a secondary. Growth. So this one, okay, this is the cock cambium, just like the uh, meristem, the the xylem. Uh, we call the the cambium in between the vascular bundle. So you have two places where you have your cambium. One is the cock cambium and one is the vascular cambium. This one, vascular cambium, this layer. Okay, so there are two places where you have your cambium. All right, okay. So for cock cambium, for cock cambium, the, the cells which are gets pushed towards the epidermis, it becomes the cork. Okay, cork is very soft kind of tissue, a uh, soft kind of uh, material. We use it to make the wine bottle, the cork. Okay, and it's actually soft, right? And it's a lot, it's actually waterproof because it has a material called suberin. And it makes it waterproof, okay, and it uh, minimizes loss of water. Then on the inner side, the cell that get pushed inwards, okay, is secondary phloem, okay. In your book, I think it's called a uh, cortex. So that's why I put a stroke here: secondary phloem or cortex. Okay, one minute. I show you here. Where's the notes? Here. Okay. Uh, right. Do you see this word? Okay, this line. So number C, the cord layer forms a protective bark peridum on the surface of woody stem. The bark consists of cork, cork cambium, and phloem. Okay, so this is a recap of what you've learned earlier. All right, okay. So just uh, remember that you have two places where you have your cambium. One is the cork cambium, which is nearer the epidermis. The other cambium is in the vascular bundle. And both of them actually uh, multiply through mitosis to increase the number of cells, okay? And you will get new material, new tissues, okay? So, uh, and then it makes the diameter increase, so it becomes thicker and thicker. So every year, this happens. So you find that every year you will find the rings, okay? Later on, you will know how, you will, uh, learn how to read the rings and see how old the tree is, looking by the number of rings on the tree, the formation of rings on the tree. So one year it goes thicker and next year it goes thicker and so on, okay? So any questions so far? I just have a look at the chat box. Okay. If any questions, you just uh, can type over there and can just let me know. Okay. If not, uh, this is similarly at the roots, right? The roots only the shape is different. It has some type of X shape or the T shape or a star shape with the xylem in the middle. This is also Udicot. Okay. This is also Udicot. So to specify, we are only looking at Udicot examples so far. 
Okay, you decode for the roots, you have the star shape with a xylem in the middle, and in between there, you have your phloem. So this is the phloem, and this is the xylem. Xylem is this part, the blue color. Okay, I'll just label it as blue here. So this part here, here. Okay, this is your xylem for Udicot, huh? okay? And the red color one, this is the vascular bundle, okay? Ves oh, sorry, okay, vascular cambium. And in between here, you have the green one, that would be the uh, phloem. This is your primary, primary in between here, okay? And then afterwards, you will have the mitosis, the cambium will increase in number of cells, and you see that you will have your secondary phloem, all right? Secondary phloem here, and you will also have your secondary xylem. So your root also expands in diameter, not just your stem. Okay, so now let's look at the annual growth ring. Huh? Now you can actually see as the plant grows older and older, as you know, the diameter increases, you can actually see there are bands inside, there are actually lines. And that's how you see you determine the age of the tree. Okay, by counting the number of years, because one year you will have uh two seasons, right? Uh, where it will actually you will see the, the the distinct coloration the different one will be one band will be darker one one uh, band will be darker the other band will be lighter okay let's see why okay why you have uh, one band like darker and one lighter so one dark and one light actually makes up one year so when you count the rings on the tree right let's say look at the diameter of a tree when you see one dark and you look at the one that's lighter so one dark and one light color it actually makes up one year so you count, okay, count from the, the from the inside, okay, you count and count and count. So you will see that how many number of dark and light in this one year, how many uh, groups of it, then you will see the how old the tree is. Okay, let's look at, ah, Cikgu Fanida ada bersama dengan kami. Ah, okay, thank you Cikgu Fanida. All right, okay, thank you for supporting. <laughs> thank you for joining my class. Okay, now annual growth ring, ah, right. Now in temperate countries, temperate countries are not, uh, Malaysia. Malaysia is called tropical country. Countries have seasons. Okay, one year we have how many seasons? One year we have four seasons. Okay, let's start with let's say spring. Okay, now in uh when Chinese New Year time is considered spring ah, Chun is Chun Tian. So spring. After that, you will get the summer. Okay, summer. Summer is the warmest part of the year. Then after that, you will have autumn. Autumn is where the trees will drop the leaves. Okay. And then this is, of course, doesn't happen in Malaysia. Malaysia is all evergreen. The leaves never drop, right? It's always green for the whole year. But I'm talking about camp temperate countries. You have four seasons. So spring is where the plant grows the fastest because the weather is nice, right? the weather is suitable. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of sunshine. So the plant grows the fastest around spring, all right? And then you have followed by summer. After that, you have winter. Winter is almost like approaching, uh, sorry, as autumn. Autumn is approaching winter. So the is the condition not so good already, not so, not so, uh, not so what you call uh conducive for the growth. So the plant actually sort of like getting into hibernation mode. So they will drop the leaves, all right. And then that's why you have all these autumn leaves uh, because the whole, you know, some temperate countries like Korea and Japan, where the when you go to visit them in autumn. You will see the leaves all red and orangey, very beautiful, right? Brown, red, and orangey. Then you know that it's autumn. Okay, then after autumn, you have winter. Now, for these four seasons in temperate countries, the plants will have different growth rate. They don't grow the same the whole year round. Okay, there are certain times when they grow faster and certain times that they will go slower. Okay, now let's look at... Eh? In uh, spring first, let's start with office spring. All right. Now, in temperate countries, the activity of the cam vascular cambium is not uniform. That means not the same. The whole year through, they do not go. They do not uh, multiply at the same rate. Okay. Now let's look at in spring. Yeah, uh, in spring, like I mentioned just now, spring you have the uh, most favorable conditions, so they grow the fastest, and they, uh, you know they will have uh, cell growth will be at the at the most optimum. In spring, the cambium is more active. Okay, more active means they grow faster, right? And it forms larger and thinner wall xylem vessels. So the xylem vessel will be thinner wall, all right? And they're larger, yeah? larger. That is, remember, their tubes are hollow to allow the, the water to pass through, okay? Because of favorable conditions. Favorable conditions mean you have enough sunlight, you also have enough water, okay? And the temperature is just right, okay? In fact, it's perfect. So it's called favorable conditions. And then you will get light rings. 
Okay, so the pattern, all right, after you, let's say, the, of course, the plant dies and you slice it off and you see the light, the light banner, this is formed during spring. So we call this, actually, that band there, this is called spring wood. Okay, now later on uh, to the end, uh, the different, the difficult, uh, the later part of the year, then you will have autumn and winter or you have late summer. Okay, so this is when water is limited. Okay, okay, uh, pukul sui fen, right? Not enough. That is called unfavorable already uh, because plant needs water, plant needs sunshine. So no water, no sunshine, that means it's unfavorable condition. Then you'll find that the cambium will be less active. That bees are uh, because it does not get enough the, the substance that it needs. Okay, less active and it forms narrower vessels. So the vessels become narrower and the fibers get also smaller. Then you will have thicker walls. So when the walls are thicker, it looks darker. So during uh, autumn and winter, okay, autumn especially, when it is uh, the plant uh, grows during this time, it will form the ring or the, the pattern that will be a little bit darker. Okay, so only a few like secondary xylem cells are produced. So dark rings are formed. All right, so like earlier one was light, now it's dark. So that is like approaching winter, all right, or autumn or winter. In fact, for winter, it's almost like zero growth because it's so cold in these countries and water is scarce. That means not enough water and of course, hardly much sunshine. So it will be also uh, dark, lah, just like the autumn. Okay, so you have uh, the wood that is formed in spring is called spring wood. So spring wood is lighter in color. Okay, and the wood formed in autumn is called autumn wood. Okay, some books write summer wood as well. Okay, so you have spring wood, which is lighter, one band, you see a one band there. Then after that, you will see the darker one, which is called the uh, autumn wood. Okay, so these two actually will form what you call annual growth rings. So they form rings, okay, and one light one and one dark one actually forms, uh, mix up one year. Okay, so you want to count, you must count, you must see the number of light and dark. So light and dark is one. Another light and dark, it becomes two, year two. Another light and dark will come year three. So you want to see how old the tree is like this, huh? okay? So each annual ring, annual ring consists of light and dark. So light and dark makes one annual ring, okay? So each annual ring indicates one year's growth, okay? 一年的成长,那个记录在里面,那个 record, okay? It's record of the growth is in the, the tree, all right? In the, 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 the wood of the tree. So by counting the total number of annual rings, you can determine how old the tree is. Okay, so now in Malaysia, we won't be able to have this kind of distinction because you know, uh, firstly, of course, you do not have autumn wood or spring wood because the whole year is also so favorable. We have water the whole year round, correct? And we also have sunlight the whole year round. So you will not be able to see dark and light, dark and light patterns like this. Only in temperate countries, we will see all these lines. And lines are also sometimes quite beautiful. When you meant to make certain furniture, it forms the grains. Okay. Sometimes when you polish, I mean you cut it at the correct grain, uh, at the correct uh, lines, and then you will see the pattern on the table and all that. These are actually the, the, the people make use of all this. Uh, so this is the annual rings. Okay, how to see the annual ring? Okay, uh, right. You have autumn, right? Autumn wood and spring wood. So this is one. So let's see, uh, let me check. All right, let's. Let me put for you here. Okay, here. So here, starting from the inside here, this is, of course, you start from the inside yeah, because this is where everything starts. The middle part, okay, let's say this is the dark one, okay? And then one band of the light one, then a dark, a light, and a dark, and a light one. Okay, that will make up one year. So dark light is one, dark light is another one, two, dark and light is three, okay? So this year is three, uh, this tree is five years old. If you can see five pairs of pattern here. Okay, so that is the annual rings. Okay, let me go on to another part. Okay. Okay, wait. Uh. Yeah, okay. What's the importance of primary growth? Okay, this one we mentioned earlier. Lah. Okay, I'll just go through a recap a bit. My primary growth, as you remember, is uh, deals with the uh, of making the plant growing up, all right, taller, the shoot going, shooting to the sky, and the roots going downwards to get water. So it, the importance is increases the height of the shoot, okay? And it's important why? Why you, need to, why you don't want to increase the height of the shoot? So that it enables the shoot to achieve sunlight, okay? You want to climb higher so you can get more sunlight and it can help in the process of photosynthesis. And on the other hand, the roots also need to be longer, 
Okay, when it goes down longer, uh, deeper, it's able to grow uh, in search for water. Okay, so it's uh, to help in absorption of water, lah, all right, and also minerals. Okay, second uh, importance of primary growth. During primary growth, this is when you uh, produce the xylem and phloem, primary xylem and primary phloem. And they are, import, they are important tissues for transportation, transporting the minerals and also the organic substances. Okay, so they are helping the function is to transport water for xylem and minerals and also to transport, of course, organic substances, ah, which is the products of photosynthesis. Okay, from the leaves to all the other parts of the plant. Okay, then number thirdly, primary xylem with its lignified wall will provide support. Okay, so xylem is a little bit hard, especially when it goes old. So it has lignin to support it. So that is your primary growth importance. Now, importance of secondary growth now. Okay, why do we need secondary growth? Okay. Number one, okay, the most important point is for mechanical support. Okay, so it needs to have support because it cannot grow tall and taller and taller without getting wider because it'll be very, very, uh, very, what you call, it will easy to snap, okay? So it produces, the first one is to increase diameter. Second one is to produce secondary xylem, which is called wood. Okay, so the secondary xylem is actually the woody part of the, of the plant. Okay, it's to support and strengthen the growing plant. So it's for mechanical support, lah, all right? Okay, number three, either, and the, the, the importance of secondary growth is to also produce secondary phloem and secondary xylem. Okay, so this is make more xylem, make more phloem. It is to increase, uh, to accommodate the increase on the demand for water, minerals, and so on, because the tree is getting bigger. As it gets bigger, of course, more cells, there will be more demand for water and uh, transportation of food. Okay, next one produces new phloem and xylem to replace old and damaged uh, tissues, right? And produces the bark, okay, the bark. Remember the bark, the one that, the, from the cambium side, the cambium, called cambium, it produces a bark to uh, uh, reduce the evaporation of water, okay? So the plant will also evaporate, it will lengthy cells, at the at the diamond at the stem, so bark actually helps to reduce because you have this suberin, okay, the substance which makes it waterproof, okay. Okay, this bark also protects the plants against the attack of insects and parasitic fungi. Okay, so the bark is like the skin. So it's like human, we have the skin. The skin is help to uh protect from the entry, protect us from the entry of this uh, pathogen, what we call bacteria and virus. Okay, so it's a for the tree. It has the, the skin is called the bark. Okay, so another importance of secondary growth. Normally, secondary growth happens in plants which grow for many, many years. So many, many years means it, means it lifespan is very long. And the advantage for that is it's able to able to produce many seeds. Okay, so it can it, the life cycle is longer. It's able to uh, increase the chances of reproduction. Okay, so able to live longer by increasing the chances of seed production and reproduction. So if the person, let's say, uh, if the plant can live longer, definitely there'll be no more chances to produce seeds and also produce the next generation. Okay, rather than the plant just dying within one or two months, there's no chance for it to mature, no chance for it to have the next generation. So by growing many, many years, becoming very strong and steady, it has many seasons of able to produce the seeds and the fruits. So it will increase the uh, I mean, the reproduction, helps in the reproduction. Okay, next point we will talk about the important uh, comparing comparing the primary growth and secondary growth. So always remember now, many students always forget to write the similarity whenever you have questions that compare and contrast. Okay, I'm sure your form four teacher also told you many times uh, when you tackle these kind of questions, compare and contrast between A and B. Right. Most importantly, you have to talk about similarities also. When you compare, you just don't talk about the differences because comparing also means you need to find out the similarities uh, features or the characteristic. Okay, So if you do not write your similarities, you're actually losing marks because we will actually allocate some points for your similarity. So remember, at least you need to write one similarity. Okay, one similarity and uh, at least one. Uh, of course, the more the better, right? But usually differences will be more than similarity. So don't forget to write similarity. So how do you start a sentence for similarity? You must use the word both. Uh, that's easier. Both of these two or whatever, you just say both also can, uh, has what, okay? Or let's say can increase the size of the plants, okay? Or both of them can do this. 
Both of them occur in woody plants. So this word is very useful when you want to talk about uh, what you call the comparing in terms of similarities. Okay, just start a sentence, both has one. So this becomes one point, one point, one point. So if your scheme, your scheme, okay, the teacher schema, or maybe your SPM, uh, so usually they will have like this, uh, how many S, like at least one S plus five D. One similarity and five differences. Then the maximum mark will be six. Okay, so if you're just concerned with writing your differences, your maximum you can get is only five. Or they can also maybe change it a little bit. Sometimes you have 2S and 4D. Okay, we will never know. We do not know the scheme of the SPM. Okay, so it's always safer for you to write as much as you know. Okay, it's always safer. Right, okay, there'll be no such thing as writing too much with deduction of marks. Either you get the point or you don't get the point. Okay, so don't worry about writing too much. And the paper is free, all right? Just write as much as you can. Now, differences. So more usually more points for differences. Now, aspects. What are you comparing? Okay, what, what aspect, okay, uh, are you comparing? Okay, let's say, first of all, what type of maritime tissue is involved? For primary growth, we're talking about acid growing taller and growing longer. So we're only concerned with apical meristem. Apical is, remember, at the tips of the shoot and the tips of the root. For secondary growth, you have lateral. Okay, lateral, remember, the ones at the side, vascular cambium and cord cambium. So this is one difference. They involve different types of meristem tissue. One is apical meristem, the other one is lateral meristem. Okay, number two, the parts of the plants that undergrow growth. So usually uh, for uh, primary growth, it occurs on stems and root in younger regions of the plant. Okay, and then for secondary growth is for the mature parts of the stem. Okay, the mature stem, uh, it when the primary growth has ceased, let me stop already. When it's no longer primary growth, you will have to start the secondary growth to increase the uh, the girth or the diameter. Direction of growth for primary growth is longitudinally. That means it's going upwards. Okay, longitudinal is like, you know, managa. We call it managa. Okay, for secondary growth is radially from the word radius. Radial means from the center going upwards. That's called a radius. So radially means it makes it going, the diameter increases. Okay, next, growth effects. It uh, For the primary growth, it increases the length of stems and roots. Whereas for the secondary growth is to increase the thickness or the circumference or the diameter. All of these words you can use. Okay, you can say girth also. Increase the girth, diameter, uh, circumference, thickness. Okay. Next, what are the tissues and structures formed? For the primary growth, you will have, of course, primary xylem and primary phloem. Lah. And also don't forget your cortex Okay, and the epidermis. For the secondary growth, you have the bark okay which is, consists of the cock cambium and cock tissues then you have lenticell then secondary tissues secondary vascular tissues like secondary phloem and secondary xylem okay the next one for presence of woody tissue for primary growth we do not make wood okay it does not produce any wood okay it just uh, produces because primary xylem and primary phloem so for secondary growth it produces wood especially the secondary xylem which is woody thickness of the bark for primary growth, it's thin, all right? Usually it's not, uh, it's very thin. And for the secondary growth, it'll be thick. And next one, presence of annual growth uh, rings. For uh, primary growth, there will be no such thing as annual growth because it doesn't grow wider, right? Okay, it only grows upwards. For secondary growth, it's present. So here you can see at least got seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight features. So write as many as you can. If you tackle these questions, compare and contrast. All right, okay, let's go on. All right. Now, what's the economic importance of plants that undergo secondary growth? All right, now secondary growth, uh, what's the importance? Uh? So you have wood, right? One thing very important is because of secondary growth, you have wood. And wood we can use to make many, many things. So it have, has economic importance, economic value. So it, we use it to make, uh, we make furniture. We use it to make a lot of structures, okay? Because we have... Timber. Timber is kayu balak. Okay, so we cut down the trees, especially very old trees in the forest. We use that material to make a lot of things. And that is called kayu lah. We call it kayu balak. Okay, so timbers are used in construction for building houses and bridges. That's uh, of importance to us. Then examples of trees that has high economic value like merbau, chengal, jati. Okay, these are very expensive wood. Okay, some of these furnitures are made of uh, jati. Yeah? Kayu jati yeah? is very expensive because they're good material. 
okay and uh, making furniture making paper as well and presence of annual rings makes furniture look attractive because of remember the 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 pattern right pattern sometimes it's the grains ah. when you you cut it nicely you'll get a lot of this nice pattern on the table it can be used as a decorative item okay so and then some the woods and bark certain plants such as hopia and the maranti can produce resin and oil okay resin is the we call dama okay dama is the sticky substance that it, the bark produces okay some of it uh, can use it as resin. Resin is uh, the sticky substance. We use it for uh, manufacturing certain things as some kind of uh, lacquer or uh, we call it uh, kila, uh, what do you call, to, to uh, sapu on wood, okay, to make it clean, uh, uh, what do you call, smooth. And some of these resin are orang, orang asli uh, in, the, in, the, in the forest. They know how to use it because some of them, the resin is actually poisonous. So last time they used it as a poison to, for hunting. So they put it at the tip of the the what they call sumpit tan, the, the 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 thing that they blow on the sumpit ah, and then they, once it hits the animal, it will uh, paralyzes the animal, and then it can take it as I know can just use it as food lah. So resin, some of them are poisonous. Okay, use it as a uh, dama. Okay, so it also can be commercialized to use as varnish. Right? As I said mentioned varnish to make it smoother varnish, lacquer also, adhesive substances, perfume and medicine. Okay, some woods are actually medicinal values. Okay. flowering plants can also be made as decorative plants okay to make it uh beautiful uh, some plants uh, okay and commercialized fruits are uh, these are plants that actually are able to produce fruits that we eat for example mangosteen right mangoes durian uh, they have economic value we can sell it so they're able to generate income okay so these are the points uh when the question asks you for economic importance okay about secondary growth that means this plant grow many many years and they're able to produce fruits Okay, they are able to have many seasons of reproduction. They can grow very long. Okay, now, now we go on to this one, growth curves. Okay, how do plants grow and what is the graph? How does the graph look like? Last year, you've learned about the sigmoid curve. Okay, remember the human? All right, you have this. Uh, let me remind, uh, I'll remind you. Uh. So this is the human growth curve. Remember, you learn about when you are young, right? You you This is hardly, you know, the growth rate will be slow. Then it suddenly goes up like that. Right, this is uh, exponential. Then after a certain age, then it will slow down, right? Slow down, and then towards the end, you have negative growth. So this is a sigmoid curve. This is for humans, right? And also, you also learned last year uh, for insects which have hard exoskeleton, they have what? They have a, a growth rate that is like you know, like ladder, tangle. So they grow like this in stages. All right, remember, if you don't forget, please go and revise your work. Right? This is already taught in form four. Okay, so you have these uh, types of growth uh, graph. Okay, so now, so there are three types of uh, plants. The, uh, we can classify the three groups based on their life cycle. Okay, some are called annual plants. Some are biannual, liang nian, that means two years. Uh, they live about not more than two years. And perennial, perennial means long term long time one. okay so annual plants let's start with the first one annual plants are plants that have only one life cycle for a season or a year so that means uh, it has a short lifespan normally they do not last more than one year okay at most a few months only then especially uh, if you let's say all these uh, vegetables all these chai uh, right they will not grow wood if you very if it's very old all right it will just become kering die off it will just wilt and then it will just dry up and it will die Okay, so whether you eat or you don't eat uh, the plant, uh, it will it's gonna not, not form any wood, so it will just dry or die off. So they do not last more than one year. Okay, they um these plants usually die after completing their biological cycle, which starts from germination, okay, fire, and ends with flowering or producing seeds, producing seed. So when they're old, they produce seeds and then that's it, they die, all right? And it's up to the seed to germinate and have the next generation. Okay, usually these are all the chai that we eat, uh, the vegetables. Okay, sawi, uh, kangkong, uh, there's a lot of them are uh, only these annual plants and they don't last very long. Okay, padi, right? This is padi. This is pumpkin, nankwa, all right? Pumpkin, uh, labu, this is watermelon. So they don't grow more than one year. You don't eat it, that's it. They die, okay? Biannual plants. Okay, biannual plants refer to plants which take two years with two seasons of growth to complete their life cycle. So they grow longer than one year, usually about two, two years, okay, two seasons. The first part of the life cycle, all right, 
It's called the vegetative growth. And they're concerned with just growing the roots and the leaves and the stem. So they just grow and old, uh, become mature. Lah. By the second year, they will mature already. So they mature already and they will undergo the reproductive cycle. That means they are, this is the time to uh, flower and the time for them to produce seeds and so on. And you have pollination. After that, you have the seeds. All right, okay. Then after that, uh, after that, then only they die. Okay, so this one, uh, their life cycle spans more than one season. Okay, so it spans about roughly about two years. And then they normally grow in temperate regions. Temperate regions is like countries like, you know, uh, overseas that with four, four uh, seasons. Okay, if we will, we don't say temperate, we, we ours over here called tropical. Okay, tropical country. Temperate countries, countries like in Korea, Japan, United States, you know, UK and all this, uh, rather cool, cooler uh, areas where you don't have one whole year. The whole year is hot like us. Okay. Now, after going through the vegetative growth, these plants will briefly stop the growth process during winter. Okay, because they will go through winter, right? Then so when they stop, they slow down, dormant. Okay, the growth will be dormant. Then during spring and summer, the growth continues as preparation for reproduction by flowering. And then after they will produce seeds, and produce uh, fruits and seeds, and eventually the plants will die. Okay, now these are examples. Now in your textbook, you have pictures like here. Okay, you have cabbage. Okay, and then this is silver cock's comb. Okay, I'm not too sure what it is because I'm not a botany person. The picture is in your textbook. You can refer to it later. Okay, it's the same thing. Right. Now, next, let's look at the growth. Um, the what they call the pattern. Okay, the picture. Yeah, where is it? Ah, takes some time to open. Okay. So, uh, third one, third one, sorry, the perennial plants. Now, perennial plants, the plants have a longer lifespan. They will grow, uh, they will live more than two years. Okay, perennial plants, we have many examples. And they are actually the ones with a very thick stem, like you know, a durian tree, a mango tree. They grow many, many years. Some of them like 20, 30, 40 years. Some are older than humans also. Okay, and especially some trees are more than 100 years old. Okay. So, depending on the species, uh, they will grow very long, longer lifespan. So they're classified into two categories. They are woody perennial plants and herbaceous. So woody, that means it has wood, all right? The stem is very strong and very sturdy. Okay, the other one is herbaceous. Herbaceous is less uh, thick, I mean, less, the, the stem is less, uh, what do you call, less hard, okay? So most of these plants are able to flower and bear Okay, fruits many times during the lifetime. So you have like, for example, season, uh, uh, durian. Durian are many seasons, right? Let's say one year, two seasons, right? For fruiting, uh, for flowering and uh, having your other uh, fruits. So usually June and December. Okay, nian zhong, nian wei la. In the middle of the year and at the end of the year. So that's one year, okay? And then the plant doesn't die, right? Then after that next year, June again, it will flower and then you will have another durian season. So durian season is not whole year. Durian season, we have one year, two times. So the second year, they are able to uh, produce fruits again. Then after that, right, you finish all your supply of durian. Then after that, the next year, it will still be able to. So it, many, many life cycles and many, many uh, chances of actually producing their fruits and also seeds. Okay. So they are very, they can live very long. All right. They have structures. They are adaptable to the surroundings and the temperature change. So that's why they are very hardy. They are able to live many, many years. Okay. Okay. Hibiscus plants, mango plants, durians as well. Okay. Now growth curve in plants. Now this you have exactly in your textbook. Okay. Now in annual plants, plants which are only grow for less than one year, like the, all these vegetables and so on, they have a sigmoid curve kind of the shape. Okay, so you have exponential. There'll be one time when you find that it grows very fast. The rate of the growth will be very fast. And then after that, it will plateau. That means it will slow down a little bit. Then after that, it will negative grow. Okay, where it will wither and then it will shrink up and then it just dies off. So stage A is decreasing dry mass. Okay, so now why is it decreasing? Because whatever food that's stored here is actually used up for germination because the, because the leaves have not come out yet. So in the beginning, the leaves are not growing yet. So it will use up the supply of food that is already in the cotyledon. Okay. Then after that stage two, a B, when the leaves start to grow. So when the leaves start to grow, you will find that this is where you have the exponential growth. Okay. Photosynthesis happens at a fast rate. So a lot of starch is produced. So cell division happens rapidly. Okay. So the rate of growth increases rapidly. This is because plant is carrying out photosynthesis. Okay. And a cell division uh, increases uh, the rate of cell division. 
Okay, next one, constant now. Uh, almost uh, coming towards the ending of his lifespan. Uh, okay, because every plant has, you know, it's, yeah, so mean that it has a lifespan. So almost nearing already, you'll find that the growth rate will slow down. Just like humans, uh, all right, as you go older, uh, as you will certain part, like certain age, you find you don't grow anymore. Okay, your more or less your height is already maximum. And this, at this time, the rate of growth is zero. That means maximum height and plants are already matured. And this is where you will have flowering, you have whatever, la. you have the fruiting, the flowering, and so on, okay? Then after that, decreasing dry mass, you happen slowly because of aging, all right? Uh, less photosynthesis, shedding of leaves, and then later on, of course, dying, la, dying off. So these are the stages for annual plant, okay? Then you have biannual plant. Biannual plant, it has two kick sigmoid curves, which are combined. So you have the first one, this is like the first season, all right, the first growth season. Then you have the second one. So for the first growth season, it's primarily concerned with growing up, just like, you know, children just growing up. After that, you mature. Mature already, then your reproduction comes in. So the first season is mostly uh, for reproduct. Uh, sorry, uh, for growing. So you produce leaves and the photosynthesis takes place. So you also have the exponential uh, growth rate somewhere here. Okay, then after that, it slows down a little, then it's already matured because here it's already matured. Okay, somewhere in the middle here is matured. So mature already, then after that, it will start to flower. Okay, you will have the second season. The full spot is used to produce flowers and seeds. So you have the flowering, then you have pollination. After that, you will have the you bear fruits. Okay, after that, the fruit is taken already or whether you don't eat it, it dies off and that's it. Okay, that's the end of the life cycle. Hopefully, the seed will be able to uh, germinate, then you have the next generation. Okay, next one. Okay, any questions, please type here uh, or you can uh, in, uh, you can ask me later in the telegram, all right? Okay, then the third one is the perennial plant, the growth of perennial plant. So on the whole, you will see like it's just one line shooting up there. But actually, it is actually if you, um, what you call Basakana, you will find that in this line, you have, oh, where is it? I can't see it anymore. Sorry, I uh, think it is. I really maximize too much. Oh, it's easy. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, this, 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 uh, what, uh, what note now? Where is it now? Ah, here, sorry. Okay, if I maximize this, you will see that, I'll put it in red now, huh? I'll put it in red. Okay, you will see that each uh, line here, this is like up, down, up, down. You see, each one is sigmoid here. It curves up, down, up, down like that. Can you see? Ha. Huh. Okay. So each year you have the equal sigmoid curve on its own. So each year is like one sigmoid curve. Okay. So it grows fast, right? Then after that, towards the end, you know, at the end of the year, then it slows down a little bit. Then the second year it grows out again fast and then it goes down a bit. Okay. So the growth rate is a series of small sigmoid curves. Every year, the growth rate is a sigma curve. So the growth occurs throughout the lifespan of the plant. So some plants grow up to 20, 30, 40, 50, even older than humans. Okay. And growth occurs throughout the lifespan of the plant. All right. The growth rate is high during spring and summer. So that's why the time exponential growth, right, are very faster. Then towards when it comes to autumn and winter, it slows down a little bit. Okay, then next year, spring again, okay, faster. Then after that, autumn and winter, slow down a bit. That's why you get this up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, but generally, because the plant becomes fatter and fatter and taller and taller, so you can just join it up, you get a general pattern is, is still growing higher and higher, lah, growing taller and taller. All right, okay. So it's mostly because when it grows is faster, it's always because of the light intensity. Think of the what the plant needs. It needs sunlight, it needs water. So if it's in abundance, that means a lot of it, you will always find that the plant will grow fast, okay? And the rate of growth will decrease in winter, okay? So in winter, you have lack of all these uh, nutrients or the what the plant needs. Huh? All right, so we have more or less, we have done, uh, okay, you look at textbook. You have a textbook already, right? You have taken your text. Oh, no, not yet. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, next week. Uh, yeah. So your workbook, or oh, your workbook has not come yet. Uh, biology from five. Uh. So this is your textbook, right? Roughly, this is the one that you have. Okay, now before we go, let me do, let's do one question. Uh. Do one question. I want you to identify the tissue. Okay. You you have the soft copy. I've sent you a soft copy. Uh, please go back and read everything here. Talk, the textbook is very important. 
all what you need, the basic, everything that you should know, the basic, not the extra, the basic must be from your textbook already. You need to remember this um, label. This figure shows a cross section of a plant stem that undergoes secondary growth. Okay, so I would like to label with ECD and you give me the names. Okay, I'd like you to type. Okay, A dash, what is it? Okay, so I'm going to label. If you can, please let me know your answer. Okay, I'll label from the outside. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm not going to label too much. I don't want to label too much. Okay, now the this color. Okay, I'll color it. I'll color it with yellow, uh, blue. So this part here, okay, this part here, I will label it as, let's say, A. Okay, A. Okay, then I will label another part. Okay, I'll label with yellow here. Okay, this part here. This part here is what tissue. Okay, then I'll label here with another, okay, red or pink. Okay, this one, this one. Okay, then I'll label another one with a different color which is maybe, uh, okay, I'll put green here. Uh, you just put random color. Uh. Don't think it's always, uh, foam is always blue. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, don't think also bloom is always uh, green. Uh. I just, okay, just randomly label. Okay, next one I have, can you just type? Ah, uh, just type in. Okay, good. I see some answers. Very good. Okay, girls, very good. Uh, let me finish this part. Okay, the third one, I put gray. Okay, the gray area is here. All right, okay, gray area. So I'm labeling, okay, A, this will be B, orange color is B, the line is C, then the green one is D, and the gray is E, and the middle part here is F. Okay, can I have some response? Let me check answers again. Okay. Minimize it so I can see answers. Ah, a lot of answers already. Good. Okay, you are very active. Good. Okay, let me try answer. A very flowing A is primary flower. Okay, A is primary flower. A primary flower. All right. Let me see these secondary flow. Okay, A primary flow. Secondary B secondary. Okay, next one. Ah, next one. Looking at. Okay, next orange is secondary. All right. Ah, Panita got good. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, next. Good, ah, the girls are good, ah. Yes. Uh -huh. Very good, yes. Then red is cambium. Uh, B is secondary phloem. C, vascular cambium. Okay, Chen Yumi has all the answers there. Okay, secondary phloem. Okay, okay. I will give you an answer. You got too many for me to check now to see randomly what are your answers. D is secondary xylem. Then what about E? But E is the PIF, E is the PIF. Do I have another answer for E? E is primary xylem. Okay, then what is F? Do I have an F answer? Ah, F is P. Ah, very clever students. Ah, mereka sangat tumbuh perhatian. Yes, they're very good. Okay, good. I'm very lucky to have students. Like okay, so let me give you the answer then. Can ah. okay, you double check? There are too many for me to check. Okay, important thing is you must understand. Lah, huh? You must understand and you must remember. Okay, so I'm giving you an answer now. To identify the line here, the line, the ring, the forms, the ring, the whole ring here. This is always a cambium. Okay, you see this this red color thing. Uh, this one is a cambium. So when you have the cambium, also take yeah, uh, you have the cambium that separates your xylem and phloem already. C is cambium, vascular cambium. All right, C is vascular cambium, vascular cambium. All right, vascular cambium. Okay, difficult to write, a bit smooth. Huh? Okay, then vascular cambium, remember, outer side. Phloem is always on the outer side. And the one nearest to it will be always the primary. Okay, this is the original one. Primary phloem. And the one nearer on the other side will be the primary xylem. Okay, am I right? E, yes. E is what well. is. Hey, eh, sorry. <laughs> so, oh, wrong, wrong, wrong. All right, the new one. This is a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. 
uh, yeah, you or uh, yeah, I, I made a mistake. So the one neuro no secondary. Uh, what am I dreaming? Uh, say my mimpi. Uh. Okay, this secondary phloem. Uh, secondary, this is a new one. Then this one is the secondary xylem. Yes. Then the one pushed towards inside will be the primary. Okay, so I mean here. Okay. Xylem. Then the uh, yeah, correct. Then the A is primary phloem. Okay. You must know how to label. Okay. Lastly, what is the F? F I see the correct answer. Yes. Pif. Okay. Understand or not? Right, Pisa. Huh? So these skills you must have. You know, you need to identify the parts. Okay, so a whole the whole textbook must read. Yeah, I'm, the chapter one now. Uh, I mean, more or less, I finished chapter one. Please read. If you don't read, you have nothing to write. I can do that. Read. You understand only. You do not remember. You cannot write anything. I give you marks if you are based on what you under. You cannot show. And you cannot write it out. Okay, so by uh, one of the D is people to memorize people who don't like to read, then you find they don't like bio, right? But please something that is if you know understand it, you can write it score. Like you can really, really score. Okay, so don't be afraid of bio, it's not as difficult as you think it is. Okay, so I am finished with this. Okay, so what am I going to do with the notes, right? Again, I am going to blank out certain parts of it. I'll give you the whole set so you can uh, fill it, okay? And you can uh, send it back to me and you can, after I mark it, I'm going to give you another session later. I mean, another, another session, I'm going to check the answers, okay? All right, so that's all for today's lesson all right we started a little bit late so i had to end a little bit late so it's 9 34 so i hope to see you another session all right okay i hope you can uh please come into my class uh oh, wait, wait where did i go all right okay stop all right i'm accidentally switched. so uh next lesson will be on thursday all right today is when it's on friday night okay so same time hopefully there are no more mistakes like just now there's no more problem okay so see you you next uh, on next friday all right any questions please get to me uh get back to me on telegram okay just have a good evening good night okay bye bye